Welcome to the online tutorial presented by Yon Biology Nowadays. In this video, I will be giving you a short description on Kingdom Plantae and Kingdom Animalia coming under Vitaka's Five Kingdom classification. Kingdom Plantae consists of eukaryotic growing plants. The scientific study of plants is called botany. The green plants of the Kingdom Plantae contain the green pigment chlorophyll. And due to the presence of chlorophyll, they are able to prepare their own food by a process called photosynthesis. This means that they are autotrophic. But a few members, such as the insectivorous plants and parasites, are partially heterotrophic, which means that sometimes they also depend on other living organisms for food. Examples for insectivorous plants are the Venus flytrap, which uses their snap traps to catch its prey, pitcher plants, which use their pitfall traps, sundew plant, which uses the stalked mucilaginous glands covering their leaf surfaces, and bladder wart, which uses their vacuum driven bladders to catch the insect prey. They are adapted to live in soils poor in nitrogen and insects are a rich source of nitrogen here. In the case of Venus flytrap, once closed with the insect inside, digestive enzymes are secreted and the nutrients from the insect body are all absorbed by the plant. The traps will open after 10 days, leaving behind only the husk of the insect. About the parasites of the plant world, an example is Cascuda commonly called as daughter. Some species of cascuda have low levels of chlorophyll and can photosynthesize slightly while most of the cascuda species depend entirely on the host plant for nutrition. Here the yellow vine is a cascuda plant. It looks leafless because the leaves of cascuda plants are reduced to scale-like structures. They produce hostoria which will enter the stem of the host plant and absorb water and all required nutrients. Cascuta may kill the host plant finally. Regarding the cell structure of the plant cells, as they are eukaryotic, they have a true nucleus surrounded by a nuclear envelope and also other membrane bound organelles. They also have a prominent chloroplast containing chlorophyll for photosynthesis. Their cell wall is mainly made up of cellulose. The cell walls also contain hemicelluloses and pectin. The members of Kingdom Plantae belong to five main groups. Algae, Bryophytes, Pteridophytes, Gymnosperms and Angiosperms. Life cycle of plants has two separate phases. A haploid gametophytic and it deploys sporophytic phase. Here, a multicellular gametophyte, which is haploid with one set of chromosomes or half the number of chromosomes represented by N, alternates with a multicellular sporophyte, which is diploid with two sets of chromosomes or full set of chromosomes represented by 2N. Let's see the life cycle of a plant starting with the sporophyte. A mature sporophyte produces spores by meiosis, a process which reduces the number of chromosomes to half. The haploid spores germinate and grow into a haploid gametophyte. At maturity, the gametophyte produces gametes by mitosis, which does not alter the number of chromosomes. Two gametes fuse to produce a diploid cycle which develops into a diploid sporophyte. In this way, the sporophytic and the gametophytic phases alternate with each other. This phenomenon is called alternation of generations. The lengths of the haploid and diploid phases and whether these phases are free living or dependent on others vary among the different groups in plants. Let's see the alternation of generations in the fern Onoclea sensibilis. The diploid sporophyte will produce bead-like structures containing groups of sporangia bearing haploid spores. Each haploid spore 
will germinate into a haploid gametophyte which is a flat thallus. From this gametophyte, zygote is produced by the fusion of gametes. And from the zygote, a young diploid sporophyte is produced which you can see as a small leaf-like structure in this picture. The young sporophyte will grow into a matured sporophyte and the life cycle, the alternation of generations continues. So that was just an overview of Kingdom Plantae and we will learn more about Kingdom Plantae in another lecture. Now let's see the main members and features of the Kingdom Animal layer. The members of this kingdom are multicellular eukaryotic organisms. The scientific study of animals is called zoology. An important feature of this kingdom is that their cells don't have a cell wall. Another characteristic feature of this kingdom is that they are heterotrophic. They cannot prepare their own food. They may directly depend on plants for food or sometimes they depend on animals that feed on plants. The mode of nutrition here is holozoic, that is by ingestion of food and internal processing of it. There are several stages of holozoic nutrition. Ingestion, which means taking in food through mouth. Then digestion, which involves breaking down of complex food particles into simple molecules. Digestion takes place mainly in the stomach. Then absorption, which involves taking in of food in the soluble form from the region of digestion into the tissues or into where it has to be utilized or into the bloodstream which transports it to the different tissues. Majority of the absorption takes place in the small intestine. Then assimilation, which involves utilization of the absorbed molecules for various metabolic processes. Food reserves are stored as glycogen or fat. And finally, expulsion of undigested food material called ingestion. Animals follow a definite growth pattern and grow into adults that have a definite shape and size. Higher forms show elaborate sensory and neuromotor mechanism. Most of them are capable of movement. The sexual reproduction is by copulation of male and female followed by embryological development. And that was an overview on Kingdom Animalia. We will learn more about Kingdom Animalia in another lecture. That's all for this video. In the part 6 of this lecture, we will see more about viruses, viroids and lichens in detail. Bye for now and stay tuned.